Hey guys, Luis Moreno here with 360 Insurance Group. I've got Jordan from Hell Sherpa, and uh, she's freezing. It, it's funny, I was complaining to her this morning, it's 50 degrees, oh my God. And she's like, yeah, shut up. It's negative five over here. <laughs> so she's in Colorado. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, little, little different kind of cold over there. But uh, guys, we're going to walk you through a quote and an enrollment here. So take advantage of this video. Watch it entirely. Hell Sherpa is the premier health enrollment tool that I use for enrolling people into ACA Obamacare. I've been using it for years, guys. It is, I, I use nothing else. And more importantly, I never go to healthcare.gov. That's so, God's oh, awful. I hate when I have to go over there. So Health Sherpa and their quote and enrollment platform allows me to stay on the Health Sherpa platform. I can quote there, I can enroll, and I can even manage my client on Health Sherpa to an extent. Um, but it's an incredible platform. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let Jordan share how she runs the quote. We're going to add it to the cart, and then we're going to process an application so you see what that's like. So Jordan, thank you for being on today's video and it's all yours. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, let me share my screen here and get us started. All right, can you see my screen? I do, we're good to go. Great, and one thing you forgot to mention is that we are free to use. So all of these tools that you see on Health Sherpa, we do not charge you. We do not charge you per enrollment. We are completely free to use. If you have questions, please reach out to us. But again, it is our goal to make it as easy as possible for you to enroll as many clients as possible. Um, oh, so and speaking of free, the other deal, guys, is know that when you enroll using this tool, you remain the agent of record. Okay, you're in control, which means you get the commissions, which also means is if your carrier, you, I'm sorry, your carrier, your the time of the year, you potentially may be uh, um, in the position to get bonuses. All this is yours, guys. So Hell Sherpa is just providing the tool that's going to allow you to communicate and or enter all your data so you can run your 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 uh, enrollment. But you are the agent of record, guys. You're not giving that up. Yeah, thank you. Great point. And. We have tons of resources to make sure that you are set up correctly again today. We're just going to do a, a short clip here, but if you're brand new to Health Sherpa and want to learn more, please, please reach out and we'd be happy to help support you and do a full training. Um, so here today, I'm actually logged into what we call our staging environment, which is a test environment. It's all fake client information in here. I would like to add that if you do create a Health Sherpa account, please do not submit test information. We are connected to healthcare.gov and you will get flagged for submitting test information. So again, if you have questions, reach out to our support team. They're happy to help you. Uh, but again, today, this is a test. So we'll click on this quote bu button up top here. Now, just real quick, because they're going to be wondering, so I can't, you can test out the quote and do whatever you want on the quote correct, and say, correct. just yes. do not submit to healthcare.gov. Do not add it to the cart and proceed, guys. Yeah, okay. don't submit an application with fake client information or your own information if uh, you're pretending to be a client. So here I'll just do an example quote. So let's say that I'm in Phoenix. I'm a 35-year-old female. Uh, you could use date of birth or age. So if you're like me and you can never figure out uh, the age based off of date of birth, it always takes me forever to calculate that. You could just use this toggle here. You'll see you've got a bunch of optional options down below. So let's say I selected male. The pregnant question obviously is hidden there. Uh, really simple to add a spouse or a dependent. But one of the things that you'll see with Health Sherpa is we don't ask you questions unless you indicate that they need to be filled out. And the purpose of that is to help save you time. So you saw how quickly it was once I popped in this information here we would see an estimated eligibility over here. So this example would be eligible for $257 a month in savings and a CSR. So a cost sharing reduction there. I know I use a lot of acronyms, so trying to make sure that I call those out for anyone that's new. If we scroll down in the quote here, we can see our plan results. So there's 137 plans. Go ahead. Before you do that, let me, can you go back up just a little bit? Yeah. So I want to kind of give our, our agents kind of a little bit of data here. So on the left-hand side of your screen, guys, 
very clearly here. This is who is applying for coverage. But let's just say that this guy or this, it's a female, she is married, but her husband is not going to get insured. You would not put the husband information here on the left side. Now, in the middle where it says household, okay, household members, that is very, very important that you choose the correct household number of members that are in there. That is the not, not physically who lives in the house. It is the people that are on the tax return. So if she files married with two kids, that's a household of four. Even though only one is applying, guys, I see a lot of agents mess this up. Make sure that you're choosing the correct number of members. And that is the that is, those are the members that are on the tax return. So if grandma lives with them and they have a sister that lives with them and the sister's kids, well, I'm going to you, you can't count everybody unless all those people are on your tax return. Then you can add them, but make sure that you do that correct calculation there on the members. And then on the final right-hand side, I always say this is the result of the data you entered in the left side and the middle. Savings, this is your monthly subsidy. It is your APTC, your is it annual premium tax calculation, I think, or what's A uh, stand for? Advanced premium advanced. tax. Advanced, there you go. That's right. There you go. So it, it's got different meaning or different uh, words for it. But ultimately, what it means is this is how much they're going to save off the premium every month. And then CSRs. If you take your mouse and you put it over the CSR, you get a little definition there. Okay. CSRs, depending on the data that you entered, what happens here, guys, is that the system will automatically calculate lower deductibles lower co-payments and lower co-insurance and also lower out-of-pocket maximums for these people. But the key word here, guys, is you, you got to look at the, the last four words of this. It only applies to silver plants. If you choose a bronze, if you choose a gold, you, this CSR is not going to get applied to those of the plants. So I always tell agents, you know, it kind of like be a robot here. If you see this badge, the CSR, automatically filter to silver. And I'll let Jordan continue. Uh, but just, just be aware there's a lot of data on that top portion. Yeah, some great tips. And you know, on that same topic here, we're starting with a quote here. We will get you very close to accurate results here, but you do have to go through the application to actually generate the eligibility results on that household or on that client. Um, so just keep in mind that if this is what you enter here, household members one, but then as you're filling out the application, you indicate, hey, there are other folks in the tax household. That is where the eligibility results would potentially calculate something different. And there is quite a bit of flexibility with our system, meaning that let's say you're working with husband and wife and they need to be enrolled in separate plans. You've got the ability to do that through Health Sherpa. I'm using a very simple example here today, um, but do not just try to simplify it in the quote here. You want to follow exactly how the household is set up, and you should be able to do exactly what your clients are requesting, even if that means having multiple enrollment groups or a split policy um, or you know, husband and wife with wife not applying. You've got the ability to do all of that on Health Sherpa, and you can also use this quoting tool in all 50 states. So even if the state is a state-based exchange where you can't do the application on Health Sherpa, you can still see the plans that are available in that zip code and get an estimated savings or subsidy amount. So just keep that in mind if you're writing any business in those states, this is still a great tool for you to utilize. So, all right, we've entered in this basic information up top. We'll scroll down to the plan results. So Louise mentioned that we should filter to silver. So as you can see here, I've got all of these awesome filters on the left. Maybe first I wanna see if Dr. Smith is in network. So I'm gonna add Dr. Michael Smith. And then I'm going to go down to metal levels and I'm going to filter by silver. Now I know that I have the CSR. I can see that available on these plan cards here. One of the tips I'm also going to share with you is our great plan comparison. So 
you have on Hill Sherpa the ability to compare up to five plans. So see here down below, we click compare. We have now this nice side-by-side -side view where we can see max out of pocket and estimated all in the type of network the plan is, what they're gonna pay for prescription drugs, emergency room visits. You also have all of these resources available right at your fingertips. You don't have to go over to the carrier website to find those. So the purpose of this is just to make your life easier. You can print this for your clients. So let's say they say, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not ready to make a decision. You can print this page off. It'll include that household information that you previously entered at the top of that print page. And it'll also have your name, your contact information, and your NPN. So let's say they go to healthcare.gov and they do the enrollment on their own once they've picked a plan after what you've printed out. They now have your NPN so they can put it on the application and you get credit for supporting them. Um, if you do print this page or save it where you left off, it will be saved in your Health Sherpa account. You can follow up on that as a lead. You can share this page really easily here by typing in your client's information. If you don't want to send it from Health Sherpa, you can copy and paste this link. And if they use the link, it'll bring them right to the page that you leave off on. I have heard from some agents that their email doesn't let them copy and paste this. It's a long link. Let me give you a tip here. Just Google URL shortener. I think one of the popular ones I see is called Tiny Link. You pop this link in, it gives you a really short link, and then you just put that in your email instead. And some agents prefer to do that because you can track whether or not your prospect opens up your email, or you can sort back through and see who hasn't followed up. So just a little tip there. Hey, Jordan, what was the name of that site? Tiny what? Tiny Link or Tiny URL or something like that. If you just something Google like that. Uh, URL shortener, you'll find there's a bunch of free options out there. Yeah, tiny URL. Wow, pretty good. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I always warn my clients, you're going to get yeah. this humongous yeah. link. Don't worry about it. Just, you, it's okay. It's safe. Um, yeah. Now, one of the tips, can you go back to the uh, compare? Yeah. One thing that I do, guys, because this link is huge and I do get people, and you can just do a couple, it doesn't matter. What I do is if you do control minus on your computer, Okay, I like to screenshot this screen, but I want to capture all the data. So can you close that? There you go. So if you do control minus on your computer, it'll make it smaller. And then what I do is I use uh, the clip it. No, not clip it. I use, uh, uh, what's it called? Snipping, the snipping tool. And okay, I will yep. snip this entire thing. And then I will paste it as a picture on a text message. They, oh, they, like you said, for my CRM, um, or I'll put it into an email and I'll just send this to them. And then also when I use a snippet tool, I have the ability to highlight. So if I know that my insured had uh, the one of their deals was like, I need lower co-pays for my doctor, then I'll kind of highlight what I think is, you know, their, their, their needs that way they can figure it out. I can also use a pencil and circle. And I'm like, hey, this is the plan that I recommend. And uh, so it makes it a little easier for the client or the lead to see this information. But the, yeah, the plus and minus makes it bigger and smaller so you can fit all the data. I didn't know that. What a great tip. I love the text message idea too. That's an awesome idea. Well, most of mine are through text. And so my CRM guys, and it go down below and I have some information on it. I have the ability of once my data is entered, the name, the email and the, and the phone number, Literally, I could just go to SMS, it opens it up, and I paste this picture in and I send it from there. I don't have to do it on my phone. If I send it on my, my phone, it looks a little funky. Um, I think the screen and the, like my shirt right now looks a little weird. I'm not, I don't have a weird shirt, guys. It's just a lot of little squares on it. But it looks very weird when I take pictures of my screen from my phone. So doing it from the CRM is beautiful. Um, but no, this, this, this is good, guys. It's a good way to send your clients some options. Yeah, definitely. Those are some awesome tips. So here, we'll just so clear these You results. did forget one thing, Jordan. Okay, and it's just for you agents. So you enter the doctors and you see here, Dr. Smith with his plan, it's in red. That doesn't take this plan. This is, I love this. But you can also do this with prescriptions. So click on prescriptions, maybe choose lisinopril, L-I-S. It'll pop right up. Right there. I just do that, whichever one. And so you can enter the medications, guys. And then what it will tell you, you know, in this one, it says doesn't take it. But 
Uh, if we just do the regular lisinopril, um, it will tell you, let's enter that one so they know what it looks like. Um, LIS, and you'll scroll down, keep on, go, go down a little bit more. Let's see here. No, no, we want the generic. Um, where is a regular lisinopril? That's the one you chose. It could maybe, just maybe, be maybe type it out a little. Let's try like Zyrtec or something. Yeah. This could just be because I'm on our staging environment. It, oh no, there it is. Oh, okay, you go. see there that it's in green, guys. No charge after deductible, or it'll say uh, five dollars, ten dollars. It'll tell you what the copay is going to be for that medication. So utilize these two tools because if you want to do a good job for your client, guys, you want to enroll them in the plan that their doctors take and that and and also that their prescriptions are covered. So it's an it's a great tool. You guys didn't have that for a while. It was a little difficult, but then now you've added it to the quote screen, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. So you've got the ability to do that for doctors, hospitals, prescriptions. You've got filters here by carrier. So let's say in Arizona, you're only contracted with a couple of the carriers. You can just select those carriers that you want to sell. We already talked about the metal levels. You've got networks eligible for an HSA. So a bunch of different options that you can play around with. Again, you can put some test information into the quote just to get familiar with it. You've got this toggle up top if you want to filter by lowest premium, lowest deductible, max out of pocket, or in-network providers. So again, just lots of resources. Um, if you click on the plan details, it'll bring you to another page here. So this information comes directly from the carrier. They submit this to CMS, and then that is what we display on our site. I will point out that it is important to use these dropdowns. Sometimes there is some fine print below this information, and you'll see that you also have the summary of benefits and coverage. This is a great resource, especially if you're working with a client that has very specific needs. You always want to make sure that you're checking the summary of benefits with them to ensure that their specific needs are covered. You've got the drug formulary provider list. Again, we try to make it really simple in the quoting tool for you, but we also give you all these resources available as well. And that summary of benefits, guys, don't just save it and say, hey, I'm going to send everybody this one when you're presenting that plan. It is specific to this quote. It's specific to these people, their household, their income, because what happens is depending on these, the data that you enter, the out-of-pockets change, the deductibles change, the co-pays change. So only send that particular one for that one client. Yeah, great point. So here we'll just click add to cart. So it's really, really simple. And, oh, and Jordan, right here, take a look at you. Remember we talked about the subsidy that 240 something, the rate will get adjusted. So you'll see there the full rate in red then it is crossed out and then it has the lower rate. And that is because that subsidy is being applied there. Yes, great point. And at the end, we'll see that final amount that the customer would be responsible for paying with the subsidy applied. And, and here's the other deal, guys. If you enter all the data the right way, when you complete the application, which Jordan is going to show you here, the numbers always match. When they don't match, guys, it's because... Maybe you did a household of one, but when you do the actual application, you put that they're married and you put two people. Right. Well, it's going to change. It's not that they're all oh, hell sharp. I messed up on a quote. No, it's that you messed up. You didn't put the right information when you quoted it. All right. So let's go through a test application here. Let's so this first page is the privacy statement. Um, so this is important information that you'll want to read off to your client. I won't bore you by reading this today, but definitely get familiar with this. Attend a training with us, read through it with your client. We do tell you when you need to read things off to your client. So again, I'm going to use some test information here. And just so you know, guys, she's already mentioned this. Do not run tests. Okay. Um, you can run as many tests as you want on the quote side, but do only hit add to cart and submit when you're actually doing a, a, a true submission. Thank you. And one thing I will point out here is I'm not going to use a social. Sorry, I'm not sharing my social in a public forum today. Um, I have I'll give you mine. You ready? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you oh, go. Wow, you got the first ever. I got the good one. <laughs> um, so, oh, and let me just throw a pro tip. Here's a pro tip, guys. Do not submit applications without socials. You're gonna get a data match issue at the very end of it. If your insured is not giving you the social, two things, guys. You didn't do a good job of selling yourself. Okay. Or, you know, again, you went straight for the kill. All right. One of the pro tips here, guys, is just don't go, Jordan, what's your social? No, work it a little bit. Okay. Hey, Jordan. Okay. What's your legal name? What's your date of birth? What's your address? Okay. What's your husband's information? Ease into it. And then as they're used to just like giving you information, when you ask for the social, even before they think about it, they're already giving it to you. So don't go for the kill. And again, you have to have it. Okay. It is a must. And if they're not willing to provide it to you now, they're going to have to give you additional documentation later. So help them understand if you don't provide a social now, you're going to have to give me documentation that you are going to have to scan and send to me and we upload. And if we miss that, you're going to potentially lose your subsidy and your coverage. Do you want to pay $1,200 out of pocket for your family for a plan? Just give me your social security number and let's avoid that altogether. <laughs> And I will tell you guys, my workflow and my CRM, it warms them up and it lets them know why we need it. Yeah. Okay. So, and I use that very same warning. Look, you're going to lose your, your subsidies, you know, and, and they're going to charge you more and I'm not going to be able to help you to get that back. And usually most people fine and they'll give it to you. And the ones that don't guys move on, let them be somebody else's problem. Unless you don't care, you're like, well, I'm just going to submit it and see what happens. Well, then eh, that's fine. You can do that too. Oh, this is bringing me through a unique process. So uh, just- Well, that's because today. we didn't put the social in there. So that guys, I'm going to tell you, you don't normally see that. Well, there's two ways you're going to see that. Number one, you don't put a social. Or number two, it timed out on you. I see that. Like you'll keep it open for a while. You're like, why am I getting this? Okay, go back, pull your lead up, add it to the card again, redo it. You're going to have to log in again. I, I always log out. I log back in, pull it up, and then I don't have to worry about that identity verification. Yeah, and keep in mind, I'm on our staging environment today as well. So this is all test information here uh, going through an example enrollment. These are all okay, going here. Let, let's go back. You kind of went a little fast because I want to make sure, guys, that you all know this. Go back uh, Go back to household. Okay. On here, guys, some important information. Are you married? If they're married, yes. What about separated? Separated is still married. Okay. Separated, really screwed. Or filing set. Okay, I take that back. Separated. No, I'm talking about married, filing separate. I don't know why that still happens, but I do see it. If they are married, filing separate, they're they're screwed. Okay, no subsidies. Okay, so they have to file joint. All right, the other deal is, if you look at this, guys, are you married? So if you put yes, a window, I think, pops up in the next one where you're going to have to enter your spouse's name. Is that, Can you click yes real quick, Jordan? I want to make sure. Yeah. Oh, no, right here. There it is. So if you put married... You're going to have to enter your spouse, even if they don't want to get insurance. Okay. So you put your spouse's information. Um, so let's go with no on that one, just to make it easy. Can you put, um, are you claiming any dependence? Can you put yes there? Of course. Okay. And then what happens here, guys, if, if the, the, the applicant is married, you're going to enter the kids here All right now. What if they have chip or Medicaid? You still have to enter them guys. Enter everybody that's in the tax household. Okay. But for this person is single, so we're going to continue. So again, you want to make sure that you're answering all of these as accurately as possible. We're going to skip social for this example. If you're not sure how to answer a question, hover over one of these question mark icons and we try to help you. Again, you can contact our support team. Okay, let's let's complicate this a little bit as usual. Let's put that they're not a US citizen. Okay, if they're not a US citizen, guys, it is gonna give you a drop down. You can choose yes, if they have an eligible immigration status. Can you click there, Jordan? 
And then you're going to choose that immigration. Let's go to the one that I deal with all the time. And that's the first one, the green card. When you click here, guys, do not leave this blank because you are going to get a requirement on the eligibility to enter some data. Okay, so you're going to have to enter their A number, their card number, and the expiration date. Whenever you're dealing with somebody who is a permanent resident and has a green card, have them text you the front and the back. The A number and the expiration is on the front. The card number, even though it says optional, it's not optional, guys. It's optional in that you can submit it, but you're still going to have to present it. So on the card number, if you flip the card to the back, you're going to have some data in the front. At the bottom of the card, you're going to have three rows of numbers and letters. Here's a tip. First row, in the middle, you're going to have, typically, it's I, O, E, and then a set of numbers. Okay, you're going to have to enter where it says card number, I, O, E, and the rest of those numbers. Enter it all. Okay, and Jordan, let's scroll down a little bit. Okay. We're, you, you're going to select none down at the bottom. And then this is also the big thing, guys. This is where I see a lot of issues. You're enrolling Max Smith, but on his green card, it says Max Smith Johnson. Okay, if that is the case on the green card, then you're going to put no on here, and then you're going to fill out what it says on that document. Otherwise, it's going to create a mismatch more work for you to do later down the road. The rest of the questions I've never seen issues with, but on green cards, this is where I have seen issues. That's a great tip. I did not know okay. that. Thank you for sharing that. All right. I don't know if yeah. our staging will let me go through with that test, so I'm going to switch this back, but I'm happy. Yeah, no, let's switch it that. back. And it, and then sometimes I screw up, Jordan. I don't ask. What will happen, you guys, is if they are a permanent resident and I continue as a U.S. citizen, It'll tell me on the back end, hey, that, submit citizenship yeah. paperwork. And that's my light bulb. I'm like, oh, I'll call them back. Hey, so-and-so, a U.S. citizen? They're like, no, she's, she, you know, so-and-so has a green card. I'm like, mm. so I have to go back, edit the application, and fix yeah. it. Makes sense. So the income section of the application is the one part of the application where you do have to click save. So as you can see, there's a lot of different income sources that you can select here. So for this example, we'll use a job, but it's really simple for you to add additional sources if you need to. So this will just be a yearly amount, but you can see if you're working with somebody that just gets one-time payments, you want to log everything that they can share with you that is related to income. So here we put in the job, we'll click save, and then you can see that this page changed here. So it says, okay, job with ABC News, how much? Really simple to add another income source. So if they say, okay, once per year in October, I typically have a contract job where I make another 5,000 bucks. You wanna make sure that you add that here as well. And then the Health Sherpa system will ask you to confirm with your client that based on what you've entered, the income information is correct. And this is important because our system will validate based off of the social or the client data that you've entered that that matches up with their previous tax returns or the information that the IRS has on file. And that is how their eligibility for a subsidy is calculated. If you enter something that is drastically different than what the government has on file, it's going to generate an income DMI. So you want to just really confirm that this is correct. We'll select okay, yes. Hold on, Jordan. One question or one issue I see a lot of agents deductions. So I'm self-employed and I've got tons of deductions. I'm going to go enter them right here. Okay. So click yes. Okay. And the answer is, I just know it, you can, you do not put your deductions here, guys. All right. So I've seen agents like, oh, I got a self-employed person. So I'm going to enter his, you know, all his business deductions. No, 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 no. There's uh, usually this is a no. If you put yes, the one that I have seen, and I've seen agents make a mistake, is alimony. That way, that's pretty easy. Student loan. They're like, oh, they enter their entire student loan payment. No, no, no. It's only the interest. The other, I don't know what the other is, but usually I leave this alone. And when we're talking about the income, guys, this is their AGI. It's really supposed to be the MAGI, but I never know. You can't find that on a tax return. So I usually tell people, go to your AGI, even if they're self-employed, 
They can go to the AGI. I think it's line number 11 or 12. And I tell them, what number do you have there? Okay. If they're self-employed, the schedule C has already been calculated and it's in one of those higher line items and it's already been accounted for. So they may make a million dollars gross, but they have $950,000 in expenses where they're only going to net 50 plus a couple of other little minuses. They may be at 30. That 30 is going to be in that AGI column of their old tax return. Okay. This is what I also tell agents about their old income from the previous year. Technically, you can't use that unless I tell agents, tell your insurers to use that as a guide and then say, hey, is that what you're going to make next year or this year? We don't care what their status is for 2022. We don't care if they were single married. We don't care how they filed last year. We don't care what their income was last year. Last year was last year. We want to know what's going to happen in 2023, their current year. So maybe they were single in 2022, but they're married. They're going to be married in 2023. Okay, well, then you use married. Uh, maybe their income was 100K last year, but this year they're only going to make 50. Well, you don't have to put the 100K. You put what they're going to make the same plan year. Great tip. You're full of them. I love it. Oh, I know. I, I, I've done over 1,300 apps, guys, in like in a couple of months. So I, all this, I have it in my memory. It's etched it into my memory. Well, I certainly learn something every time I'm chatting with you. So keep it coming. Cool. All right. So then we'll just go through some additional questions here. So the application is going to ask you, do anybody on the application need extra help? Do they currently qualify for Medicaid or CHIP coverage? Were they recently found not eligible for Medicaid or CHIP? Again, we're keeping this. Hold your oh, horses I'm here. Too fast. Sorry. Oh, hold it, Jordan. We just did a video, guys. Go to my back to my channel. Me and Jordan did a video for you guys on the unwinding of Medicaid. Guys, 15 million people starting this month, next month probably with an effective date of April, are going to be losing Medicaid. This is an incredible opportunity to write people. So if somebody is losing Medicaid, can you just click on Max on that third question? Here's where you're going to go, and you're going to choose Max. And then let's see, has this been updated already? No, so this will be applied once the continuous coverage ends. So that'll actually be a... There will be a Medicaid, or excuse me, there will be an unwinding SEP that is in the SEP reasons. We're a couple slides or a couple screens from that, um, okay. but it'll be it'll live in there. Okay, got it. Okay, so that's going to be some other questions. This one is what we deal with right now that has nothing to do with the unwinding. So I do have people that the system thinks they're going to go to CHIP, yep. but they don't yep. qualify exactly. for CHIP. So you would go on here and like, okay, Max is the kid. He got denied chip and I would click him okay. and then I put the date that he was actually denied. Yes, exactly. So that's what this section is for here. And then on our next page. So are they currently enrolled in coverage? We'll say no here. We do have some additional HRA questions here. So we do have the ability to support ICRA and QSERA enrollments. That is a video for another time because those applications are processed a little bit differently, but I just like to call out that this is where these are answered and you'll have to enter in some additional information. So if you are working with ICRAs or QSERAs, we've got some videos where we can show you how to process those enrollments. And we've got to talk about that, uh, Jordan, uh, in the future. So I have a, a organization that helps a business, uh, helps an agent set up the ICRA for a business. Okay. Which then allows the agent to do ACA plans for all the employees. Yeah. And quite possibly the owner of the business can contribute to the premiums for that person in an ACA plan. So if you want ICRAS, guys, I do have videos on ICRAS. We've done two. We have five that are coming. Okay. We're diving down into all the specifics of ICRA. And like I said, we have an intro video. Then we have Video number two, which was we got down into some generalities about ICRA, and then we're going to get deep into ICRA. So if you're thinking about doing ICRA, it's a great way to scale your ACA business. Yeah. 
it is, there's a lot of opportunity there. And again, uh, you've got the ability to use Health Sherpa. I would like to just chat about employer sponsored coverage. Luis, I think we could do a whole other video. On yes, this we need well. to. Um, so for anybody that saw uh, the family glitch fix came out this past year, it was a few months ago at this point in time. But the way that this works is that if a uh, if somebody that you're working with, their family is offered coverage through an employer, but it is not affordable for the rest of the family, the rest of the family. So in the past, either the family members maybe have health issues and they paid for that really expensive coverage because they needed it, or they just opted out of it and they didn't have coverage. So there is now a special enrollment where if a family is enrolled in group coverage and it is unaffordable for the family, they can get an SEP to enroll in on-exchange coverage with a subsidy through Health Sherpa. Um, and in many examples, I've heard families paying 75% less. So that is a whole other avenue of opportunity that you all have access to. Um, and you have to answer these questions here through employer-sponsored coverage. So this, like ICRA, uh, is one of those things. I know, Luis, you've got some intake forms and your CRM and lots of tools for these agents to be successful. Employer-sponsored coverage is a little complex in that you have to get information from the employer. CMS has a great worksheet that tells you the information that you need. Um, there's some great tools out there, but let's say for this example, we selected that Max was getting coverage through ABC News. You would actually have to add some additional data points here about how much it cost, what the lowest premium was, uh, information about the family as well, and you would not be able to get that unless you asked for it from the employer. So some additional information is needed here, again, because I only have one applicant on this example. It's not going to work, but it's all in this employer-sponsored coverage section. So we'll do another video to teach you how to do this. It's actually quite simple. We'll calculate the subsidy for you. Um, if you don't select this, this page will just look very simple here. And, and I've done a video. I got it's a, it's a little long, but I've got a video that explains how the glitch was fixed. And there is a threshold, guys. If the premium that the employee is going to pay exceed the threshold, they can go. They can get a plan with subsidies. If the spouse and kids can exceed a threshold, then they can get a plan and they can get subsidies. Where in the past they could not. They were completely screwed. So. It's been fixed. Great opportunity. This employer coverage is not ICRA, guys. ICRA is a whole nother animal. This is a typical group plan that an employer has. And typically what happens in this scenario, guys, is an employer will offer coverage and they will usually, I would say 99% of employers only match a portion of the employee's premium. They do not pay for anything for kids or spouses or families. Right. So the, 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 the premium to add your spouse and kids on a group plan is crazy. And usually that will exceed the threshold. And more than likely, you're going to be able to enroll the spouse and the kids. The employee, questionable. They, theirs may be affordable and they may have to stick with their employer plan, but you can definitely take care of the spouse and the kids. Yes, absolutely. But you're all right. They're going to have to get some data. So they're going to have, now I do have an, that employer worksheet in that video. I did a separate one about that employer worksheet. Give that to your HR department or give that to your insured. Your insured needs to take that to their HR and have them fill it out. That'll collect all the data points that we need. Yes, exactly. All right. So now we're in the part of the application that's looking for upcoming changes that would generate the special enrollment period. So during open enrollment, you don't have to fill this section out because it's special enrollment right now. You have to indicate some sort of qualifying life event to initiate the special enrollment. So for this example, we'll use loss of coverage. Again, we mentioned earlier that there will be an unwinding SEP that will be added in here. So as soon as that's live on CMS, it'll be live on our site. All right, two things here, guys. I see agents do this all the time. And Jordan, you did it right. Okay. Agents mess these two questions up. Yep. Okay, the first one, guys, this is future. 
will an agent lose coverage in the future? So we are the 16th today. You see that she put 228. If you were to change that to 21, see what it would do, Jordan, on the date. I think it'll say you cannot enter a date in the past. Right. You cannot enter a date in the past. So realize, yeah, it, it'll flag it. I think when you it hit will. submit or forward, realize that the, the top one, guys, is future date. The bottom one is lost. It's in the past. So you have to enter a date beyond the date that you're writing it. Yes, exactly. So then here is where you would do additional ICRA and QSERA. Again, we'll skip that for today's example. And now we're on the finalized page. So it's very important that you review this page with your client and make sure that everything you've entered is correct. So you'll review this information here. If it looks correct, we'll click continue. A note on renewals. You have the ability to renew this plan for up to five years. I see actually a lot of agents potentially changing this to either do not renew or maybe not five years, but one year. And the reason that I see that is because there's been additional carriers entering the market each year. There's been just carrier changes in general. Um, sometimes your client's needs will change too. So you may not want them crosswalked into the same plan the next year. It is a best practice to be checking in with your clients several times per year, but at least once to ensure that their plan still meets their needs. And if you have this on, I agree, it will just auto renew for up to five years. And that is how you lose a client because their needs change and they talk to another agent throughout the year that now supports them. Um, you know, So you have this flexibility here. If it passively renews, meaning it auto renews um, and they have not worked with another agent, nothing will change on your end from renewals, but it really is best practice to be checking in with them and making sure they're still in the best plan for their needs. And the beauty with Health Sherpa guys is that upon renewal, you have the ability to send a renewal email to all of your book. It's yep. a click, 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 and it's done for you. And get ready because your phone is going to go off the hook. Okay, it it is kind of kind of nuts. So yeah, it will happen. And you and I agree with you, Jordan. Every year, guys, you sh should not just automatically assume that the plan for this year is still the best plan for next year. New plans come in, rates change with their current plans. I had people in $0 health plans with carrier A in 2022. In 2023, that same plan now is 400 bucks. And I have other plans that are less expensive. So if I didn't communicate with them, I you know, number one, you know, they're gonna get that sticker shot. Why am I paying 400? I was to pay nothing. And then also, you know, another agent comes in and offers them the new $0 plan. Now I just lost a client. So you have to have your systems in place to take care of your renewals. All right. And then the next section here. So these are tax attestations. Again, Health Sherpa will let you know when you need to read something off your client. Filing taxes is very important in this market. So make sure that you are reading through this with your client and they understand how taxes and subsidies work. Because if they do not file their taxes or they take too much subsidy, they are going to either owe it back, uh, they can get penalized. So make sure that you understand all of this information. And because of this EDE technology that Health, Health Sherpa has, you can electronically sign on behalf of your client. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a pro tip while we're waiting for this to come back. Guys, never manufacture income, okay? If they don't meet the requirements, well, they just don't. Now, I will coach my insurance. Look, you, there, there's, a, there's a chart that's in my smart book that you guys can purchase down below. But if their income is too little or too much, you can coach, but don't manufacture. When I say coach, this is what I do. You know, Jordan, hey, you, you're about $1,000 short from you getting full subsidies a potential $0 health plan. So last year you made 12,000. This year you need to make 13. Do you think this year you can make 13? You have the ability to put in a few extra hours. Maybe take less deductions if you're self-employed. Do you have a shot at that? If she tells me yes, I'm going to we can then change the income and proceed because 
you're putting in what's being projected for 2023. Okay. But I'm just not automatically going to put 13 just to make the plan work because Jordan's going to have a problem when she files her taxes. Okay. It's, she's going to be on the hook for a tax liability. And then Jordan's probably going to call you and like, really, I got to pay all this money back. And it's not going to be a good conversation. And if you're trying to build a long-term business, you know, it's, it's just not a good way to do it. All right. Let's talk about the eligibility here. Cause this is huge. Yeah, so now we're on the eligibility result page. So here, this green check mark indicates that Max Smith is eligible to enroll, and we can see why Max is eligible to enroll due to loss of coverage, eligible for a tax credit, eligible for lower deductibles. So this is that CSR that we talked about earlier. And then down below, we'll see the follow-ups required. So verify loss of coverage. This is called an SVI. This is a SCP verification issue. So we will have to upload documentation showing that we lost coverage. These two down below are DMIs. These are data matching issues. I didn't use a social, so now I have to verify citizenship. I have to verify income. This is what I was talking about where we're checking the federal systems to see if the income is aligned with what we expect. So we will have to upload documentation for proof of income. Here you can so you download... You can still enroll your client, guys. You just got to be aware that if they don't get this data by the, that deadline, what happens, Jordan? They will. So if they don't take care of an SBI, they lose eligibility to enroll. If they don't take care of a DMI, they would lose their subsidy and potentially lose their eligibility to enroll as well. So both outcomes will ultimately likely lead to loss of coverage for the client and now loss of commissions for you. Right. And not a good experience, guys. So what I do when I see this, I have my client. Jordan's on the phone with me right now. All right, Jordan, here's what I need you to do. Okay. For loss of coverage, you can call the carrier that you're losing coverage from and get a letter of credible coverage. It used to take weeks. Now they're like instant. Okay. They can email it immediately. Okay. And Jordan, when you get that email, send it to me. Now, as far as your income, Here's what I want you to do. Um, Health Sherpa will give you a list of options for you to upload, but I'm going to say, Jordan, go get your pay stub and take a picture and text it to me. And you're a U.S. citizen, right, Jordan? Yes. Okay. I need something. Go give me your birth certificate. Go give me your uh, your certificate of nationalization, your certificate of citizenship, and just snap a picture and send it to me. I've got to go in there and I've got to upload this. Otherwise, here's what's going to happen, Jordan. I know your premium is 10 bucks right now. But if we don't get this in, number one, on the first one, you'll lose your coverage. On the other two, instead of you paying 10 bucks, you're going to pay 400 bucks. Yep. Okay. So um, can you get this to me? And guess what I'm going to do? This is pro tip, agent sells. Do not tell her that she has until May. Okay. Because guess what? They're going to wait until May. And then by May, they're going to forget, guys. And I promise you, you're going to forget. Okay. So you need to tell Jordan, hey, Jordan. Uh, I've got like five days to get this in. I mean, I just like dropped the hammer. Okay. I'm like, can you get this to me immediately? Cause it's still going to be fresh in my mind. Yeah. And it's fresh on Jordan's mind. She wants the coverage. She's like, oh yeah, I'll get it to you. All right. And then on top of this guys, here's another beautiful thing. If you utilize my CRM, I love my CRM. I'm going to take Jordan. She's already a contact. I dump her into, or I dump the contact into this workflow that is going to notify Jordan from my CRM that she owes me this data. Plus, Hell Sherpa, this is the beauty of Hell Sherpa. Hell Sherpa is going to let Jordan know on my behalf on the what 15th day, the fifth day, yep. and the day before that she owes me this. So not only with my CRM going to go to work for me, but Hell Sherpa is going to go to work for me. And I even think CMS goes to work for us. Don't they? They go in there or, or healthcare.gov. They start calling and bugging Jordan to get this data. Yeah. So lots of follow-ups on that. Best practices, do it right away if you can. Um, here we can see the total monthly tax credit. So that's what we saw in the beginning of the quote. You're able to pull out the eligibility results right here. Let's move forward and look at the plan that we added to the cart back from the quote. So here we can see we picked an AMBETTER plan in Arizona. It's going to tell me, you know, this is 
it was 386.16 was the list price, but with my subsidy, I'm going to be paying $90.16. I can see that I'm eligible to enroll down below. And if this looks good, I'm going to click enroll in this plan. But Jordan, and I want to change plans. Okay, there's a she she clicked it, she's quick, but there is a little button that says change plans. So even though you've completed the yes, enrollment, yes. you do have the ability to hit change plans. There you go. Yep, you can just hit change. It takes you back to your quotes and then you don't have to redo the app, guys. You can right. go on here, pick another plan, add it to the cart and then finish it out. Yeah, great point. For some reason, this account that I'm using is giving me some trouble. So I'm going to- No, we're good. Of, I think the agents will get the-, the Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. For the sake of our example here, let me go back. Oh, it kicked me out. That's why. And in the in some future videos, guys, I've got some ideas. I was jotting some notes. Let's just say you've got mom, dad, and a couple of kids. But dad and the kids are going to be good with this plan. But mom needs this other plan because uh, it's got her doctors in it. And we don't want to stick the entire family on that plan because it's just too expensive. We're going to be talking, hopefully, in the future about splitting the households. We'll talk about... Uh, um, that process and how you know we, we can set up groups and that'll be in the future video that we'll we'll be shooting. Yeah, super simple to do that. After you complete the enrollment, just another tip here, the system will tell you what you as the agent need to do next. So talking about those follow-ups that are required, if you capture your, the insured's email address, they'll receive an email letting them know what needs to happen next or from Hell Sherpa, you can come in here, you can click on your client's name. It's going to open up the client detail page. For whatever reason, this page is always very slow in our test environment. It is not slow like this on the live site. No, but not. here we can see the follow-up. So if we need to take a binder payment or upload their documents, if I click verify here, this is where I'd go to be able to see what documents are acceptable. So we can see the list here. We can go right to healthcare.gov if we need more information about anything, and you will see the real-time status of these documents. So again, just lots of tools for you to support your clients, help resolve those DMIs or SVIs, and keep them covered. Take right. advantage of this, and then here's the other deal. She talked about payment. All right, me and Jordan ain't done. Okay, I'm not letting her go. So Jordan... I need your credit card information or I need your routing number and account number. You want to capture the binder payment, okay? So you'll have a little button that says pay, pay premium. You'll click on that. It'll take you to that carrier site. And then you just enter some information. It will give you a receipt. What I do is I screenshot that receipt and I send it to them. I also load it into the management system so I can keep a copy of it. Um, some carriers will let you set up future billing, and if they do, do it. Put her on auto pay. Jordan is very busy. She's gonna. She doesn't like to pay her bills. Okay, so she's probably not gonna pay this bill next month. <laughs> All right, she's gonna pay her phone bill and her car bill, and and this is gonna be the last bill she cares about. Well, no, no, no. What we're gonna do is she is gonna go on auto pay. Okay, so make sure you set it up if you have the ability. If you don't have that ability, at least take that binder payment. That's going to lock her in. So another agent follows up with her and she's going to be like, oh, I already paid. I'm not gonna, I don't want to change plans. How am I going to get that money back? It puts a barrier to her or it sets up a barrier for her moving somewhere else. So lock it in with a binder payment. You're full of the good tips today. I love it. Yeah. I love my business, girl. I'm telling you, I, uh, you know, I, I don't want to work and not have an insured pay. And then I just did all this and, you yeah. know, it just sat there. So, uh, guys, Health Sharp is a great tool. Utilize it. Okay. It's got all the follow up tools. Um, there's nothing. Go, go to settings for me because I want to show agencies. I think this is huge. Um, down below at the very bottom, look at all the things that Health Sharp does for you. Okay, you can do an export. If you want to enter all your clients into your CRM, you can do an export. Um, you can do follow-up reminders, okay, where it lets you know, it lets this is letting the clients know what they owe, right? Yeah, this is the reminder of documents that are due.
So it lets them know. And then, yeah, beautiful email it sends out. I mean, it's it's on your behalf also. Uh, the other thing is if you go to DMI, let's see, which is the other one that lets you know if if there's a change on their... Um, That's this one here. So the DMI export powers any status change to your clients. Okay. Perfect. That's a really helpful one. Some of this other stuff is agency stuff in here, but back from the client section is where you can also go and you've got some great reporting in here. So the export report is the report that has your full book of business. So if you want to pull this out at any time, you can ensure that your CRM matches what's in Hell Sherpa. And this is just a great tool to use, you know, as you're preparing for renewals each year, or, you know, if you want to look at maybe what counties your clients are in to figure out what areas do I want to grow. There's just so much information that's available to you in here. Yeah. And then the, the, the renewal, oh, there it is. It's not, I, didn't, I was like, where is it? I remember. So there's your renewal email. So you click on all your people and it sends them all a renewal. Hey, it's time to renew and get ready for the calls, guys. Uh, on my phone, you know, I'm like, I prepare myself for this. <laughs> And uh, I wish I, I should do it in sections, but I get a little trigger happy. I'm like, send them all. I don't care. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so um, great, great tools on in Hell Sherpa. I love it. Um, I, I just I don't think there's any other platform that can do what Sherpa does for us guys. So um, also down below, I will be posting my referral link for Hell Sherpa. Okay. Doesn't mean you're part of my agency. It doesn't mean I get to see your data. It doesn't mean anything. Okay. Um, it, what it means, I think, is if they submit a referral for uh, uh, a carrier that they don't have, they get a referral fee. And I think I get a little bonus, right? You do. It's a, yeah. hey, I'm happy using Hell Sherpa. You should be happy using Hell Sherpa. Exactly. So if you want to get yourself set up, guys, it's free. You can use my link or you can just go to hellsherpa.com and create an account. Okay. Uh, you know, either or, but, uh, if you like what I'm doing, yeah, just support me a little bit. Also make sure you comment on the video. Um, you can, uh, uh, like this video and then also subscribe to our channel guys. I got a lot of good stuff. I've got already a list of four. Well, you can't see it because of my background. <laughs> I got four videos that me and Jordan are going to be doing soon. So stay tuned guys. That's got a, a lot of stuff on health Sherpa and how to make you, a better agent and how to help you make more money. Okay. You make more money. Everybody's happy. And then of course our insureds are happy because you guys are being taught how to do a good job. All right, Jordan. Hey, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And, Thanks for uh, having me here today. It was awesome. We're going to make you a star. I'm not even a star. You're probably going to be a bigger star than oh, I am. No, no, no. <laughs> this is great. Happy to All be right. here. All right. Thank you guys for watching.